beware, you're in for a scare. One Pushing Up Roses here, and today I'm covering Goosebumps the game. And no, I don't mean the weird FMV one that came out in the 90s and inexplicably featured Jeff Goldblum, though that is a classic gem. Yeah. Today I'm talking about a short little point and click that came out in 2015, and that is not a coincidence, as it was meant to coincide with the 2015 movie of the same name starring the eternally adrenalized Jack Black. I have no shame in saying that I really enjoyed this movie as a Goosebumps fan, and I have a crush on Jack Black. I mean, not as R.L. Stein exactly, but have you seen him in The Holiday? It's a good movie. Roodle dee dee doo dee dee scroodle dee dee doo Roodle dee dee doo dee 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 sassy. Mmm, that Jack Black, so hot right now. I don't think I need to explain what the Goosebumps franchise is, but in the unlikely case that you aren't familiar, it started out as a book series for young adults written by R.L. Stein. It was later adapted into a popular television series and then a couple of movies. Fun fact, R.L. Stein was the head writer on Eureka's Castle. This has nothing to do with the rest of the video, I just really wanted to tell someone that. When I found this game, I wasn't expecting anything amazing. The screen caps reminded me of every rejected hidden object game I've ever found at Save and though I do like a lot of those titles because they're great for de-stressing and practicing mindfulness, they are a dime a dozen and many of them are just crap, especially in the case where it's based on an existing IP. So I was rather shocked to see such positive reviews about this game and also pleasantly surprised when I found out that it's a point and click adventure. So why not? Give me some good old classic children's horror. Goose. The introduction presents us with two moving company employees who are loading a bunch of stuff from someone's house into their truck. One of them has some seriously nice legs. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Though they do find it odd that they were hired to help someone move in the middle of the night, they don't question it due to needing the business. As they try to tell each other ghost stories during the transit, they hear a large crash in the back of the truck. They open it to reveal a bunch of Goosebumps references. I mean, this all looks fine and good, and I'm sure nothing's wrong here. Certainly nothing scary so let's just move on and holy shit what the fuck Screw that noise, let's talk mechanics before we see more of the game. This is a pretty traditional point and click adventure with inventory object puzzles. It's in first person and the location on the screen changes as you move around using the arrow keys or the mouse and you can use and interact with the items you pick up on the side here. You get a cell phone that you can use for instructions and hints which is a nice touch. You can die in this game but there's a retry option just in case and you can save your game as well though I'm not sure there's really a point to this save slot if you can just try Try again immediately. I appreciate the gesture though. It's not voiced, any descriptions and dialogue will pop up on the bottom of the screen here, but it does have some pleasant music and a nice art style. It does seem to stay in line with the tone and atmosphere you get from a Goosebumps story, and there are direct references everywhere, but it does tend to slog a bit, as exploratory games with a lot of backtracking seem to. You play as a young teen or preteen who is on their way home from school, and I do not know where this character lives, but apparently the way to and from school is through an ominous forest. On my way, I met this incredibly normal looking person enjoying a stroll through the woods. I mean, his hair seemed to be made of leaves, but I'm not prejudiced towards the green giant species, so I tried to make friends and this happened. I sprayed him in the face with weed killer and he proceeded to cower in the bushes. He doesn't die though, he just weeps in the corner and I have to step around him every time I go through the forest. You're always standing right where I want to go! As we make our way home, we find the moving truck sans the truck drivers. It's blocking the streets so we can't get home that way, I guess. But before we move on, let's steal a bunch of shit. I don't know how I'm fitting this all in my backpack and lord knows that this shrunken head is gonna cause a stench, but adventure games have taught me to steal. I guess the only alternate way of getting back home is through this filthy pipe. We pop out the other end and everything seems okay except for this weird lady walking a demonic dog and the fact that our house is turned into Stephen King's. I mean, is this a problem? I like this house, I think this house is amazing. Though it is also haunted by annoying preteen ghosts, but once you get past that, the decor is rather cozy. The main story seems rather slapped together though. Get it? Slapped? Slappy? Yeah, well, at the risk of sounding like an artsy snob hat, the plot is derivative and also not very cohesive. Your objective is to free these ghosts, but also stop the monsters from the Goosebumps books, specifically Slappy, from destroying the world and seeking their revenge on their creator. 
This game operates on creating an atmosphere using Goosebumps references versus narrative and character dialogue. There aren't too many characters to even talk to, and when you do, they don't really show a lot of depth. There's somebody posing as your aunt, calling herself Dahlia, which is directly from the book entitled An Old Story. If you're familiar with the books, that does help with figuring out the inventory puzzles. Speaking of characters, let's go check on Leaf Buddy. <laughs> Still cowering. Leafman working as intended. Ticket closed. I know this game has some replayability and achievements you can find beyond completion, but my god, is there a need for this many inventory items? What is all this stuff? Some are clearly there for amusement, like this jelly jam and this shrunken head, but most of the stuff will never be used. I found the Beast of East. Beast of East? Beast from the East? Beast from the East. I found the Beast from the East, another eponymous character from the book series, and was able to beat him with the shrunken head. Not sure why, I don't think that's how the original story goes, but alright. I'm also not sure why these ghosts are there, but you do have to get rid of them to move on. One of them just wants to hear a song, one of them needs to be given a specific letter, and this one... Well, I just have to remove her from existence. This puzzle makes sense if you've read The Cuckoo Clock of Doom, where a character knocks off a specific year from a dial and erases his sister from existence. But that made sense in the story. I didn't even know this ghost, and I just flat out erased her. Seems rather harsh, but I guess you gotta do what you gotta do when you're trapped in a dead house. I think the references are novel for those who've already read the Goosebumps series, but if you haven't, the game might teeter on the shallow side. Even though there isn't a lot of character dialogue, there are a lot of descriptions for when you look at something or change screens, which I like. The game has a lovely brand of cheeky humor, but I do find it annoying that whenever I have to go to the next screen, the same descriptive text keeps popping up. I don't need to see it every time I go from screen to screen, especially if it's just a description of the area. Have it pop up once when you first discover it, it, then it's not really necessary anymore. Overall, the game has great controls and plays really well, but I have no idea why the descriptions were so redundant. That wore on me pretty quick. In true Goosebumps form, the character you play has an annoying older brother named Chad. Of course he's named Chad, look at him. And when he comes home, he offers to drive us to the mall. I'm not sure why, but that's apparently where all the monsters are going. Gotta get in on those Hot Topic sales. We meet Slappy and he's all salty because R.L. Stein trapped him and the other monsters in his books, but luckily we contacted him beforehand and he shows up to help and... What? 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 This is not R.L. Stein. It's, it's, it's not even Jack Black R.L. Stein. This looks like a priest or something. I don't even know. It's like somebody caught a glimpse of Jack Black's version of the author for a few seconds, tried to commit it to memory, and was like, nailed it. I don't know what to say about it. Totally brill. It's very obvious that this was taken from the premise of the Goosebumps movie, which is fine. I just wish the references had a little more explanation, and some of the puzzles are clunkers. Not real jazzed about developing photos in my game, especially when I have to specifically time how long the photo is developing for, and if I over or undershoot it, I have to start over. And I'm pretty sure we've all petitioned against mazes in adventure games, but here we are, in a maze, running from monster blood. I mean, this game is good though, I do recommend it. It exceeded my expectations and it's fun. I can definitely see why people like it. It just doesn't go beyond enjoyable for me. It's a good Goosebumps game. I'm just not sure how good of an adventure game it is. But the struggle is real when it comes to licensed titles. At least it's not Wayne's World or Daria's Inferno. Oh, and be prepared for a couple jump scares. I showcased a few just to prepare you, but there are more and I shrieked at one near the end and freaked out my poor parrot who thought I was dying. Final thoughts? Decent game. Not the worst, not the best, but a satisfying time. It's like eating an Eggo waffle. They're okay. Just okay. Not bad. Not amazing, but they sure do taste good when you're really hungry. You can find the game on Steam for about 10 bucks, and it will likely take you anywhere from 2 to 7 hours to complete it. It depends on if you go for all the achievements and experiment with the different ways to solve puzzles. That being said, let's try to repress this image from our memories and talk about our favorite Goosebumps books. My personal favorite is the horror at Camp Jelly Jam, but I also have a soft spot for the Haunted Mask. Let me know all of your R.L. Stein hot takes in the comments, and remember, don't step in the monster blood, avoid glasses of suspicious looking prune juice, and don't eat the purple peanut butter. God, is he still there? 
Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching my video on Goosebumps the Game. I hope you liked it. If you want to bug me about children's horror, there are links to my social media in the description. If you want to support the show, then check out my Patreon campaign. And if you want to start a Jack Black Appreciation Club, just let me know. I need a vice president. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.